Welcome back. Time now 949, 58 degrees in this week's Alaska history lesson. How a totem pole from Sitka was stolen and shipped to Seattle. A replica of that pole can still be seen today in Seattle's Pioneer Square, but as author Laurel Downingville tells us, the original owners were not too pleased when they found the pole missing from a burial ground. Totem poles like this one, well, they're more than just beautiful works of art. They typically hold special meaning for native cultures and recognize important events. Yeah, in the 1890s during the Klondike Gold Rush, the Seattle Chamber of Commerce, they wanted to connect with their neighbors north, and they thought that it would be a good idea to display a totem pole uniquely tied to native culture. And back then, Seattle was the center for travel to Alaska Laurel. As the story goes, the Seattle Chamber of Commerce wanted to erect a totem pole in its Pioneer Park, which was at the time the center of downtown Seattle. So in 1899, the Seattle Post Intelligencer put a delegation on board the City of Seattle. Well, the City of Seattle plied the waters of Alaska a lot during the Klondike Gold Rush era. And so she sailed off to Sitka, where this delegation hoped they would find a totem that was worthy of the their park. Now, during this period of time, totems were traditionally on burial grounds, so their mission was indeed a delicate one. So that steamship sails north to Alaska, but passengers on board are told not to believe anything that they hear and only half of what they see. So what did they actually see? Well, when the city of Seattle concluded her business in Sitka, she pulled out of port and sailed a little ways and then anchored by a stream. And so the passengers saw a lifeboat going over the side into the water, some men climbing in and rowing to shore. So these men spent some time looking around, and then they found what they thought was the perfect totem pole. So they and some of the sailors helped them chop down this totem pole, just like a tree, and then it was too big to get it off the beach by rolling, so then they had to cut the totem pole in half in order to get it to the ship. Well, this totem belonged to the Raven Clan, and it had been carved in 1790 for the chief of all women who had died in, uh, by drowning in the Nass River. So what happened to the totem pole after that? <laughs> well, they got it down to Seattle, put it together, and erected it in Pioneer Park. A much jubilation and clapping and enthusiasm from the citizens of Seattle, according to a newspaper article. However, the Clinkets were not so happy. They demanded the return of that totem and a $20,000 restitution. However, they eventually settled for $500, which the Seattle Post Intelligencer paid. So that totem, does it still stand there today in Pioneer Square? Oh, it stood proudly until 1938 when a reckless smoker tossed a cigarette butt against its decaying base. So the city had to take it down. But in 1940, they erected a brand new totem pole that was carved by the descendants of the original carvers of the one that they stole. So the next time you're in Seattle, swing by Pioneer Park and you'll know the backstory behind the magnificent totem pole standing in the square. Pretty cool the descendants were able to carve another one yeah, and I, have yeah. it stand again. I was in Sitka recently and the totem poles there are just amazing but shouldn't steal them so. Yes. <laughs> very, very bad.